If the James Webb Telescope were twice the size, would it be twice as powerful? What would a larger and larger telescope see? And how would it be built? Spider Fabrication The limiting factors for the James Webb were A. Money and B. Payload Size It had to fit in an Ariane 5 rocket that had a payload size of 4.6 meters in diameter. The James Webb Telescope has a diameter of 6.5 meters. It has 18 hexagonal segments that are coated with gold. This required a foldable mirror and sunshield. Every fold, hinge, and segment added risk. It had over 300 single points of failure when deploying. So what can it see? And what could a much larger telescope reveal? The James Webb Space Telescope sees galaxies as they were some 13.5 billion years ago, close to the Big Bang. It witnesses galaxies forming during the cosmic dawn, when stars and galaxies lit up the universe, ending the cosmic dark ages. Closer to home, the telescope sees galaxy mergers and evolution, and star formation regions obscured by dust. It sees tiny light changes during planet transits, when a planet passes in front of its star, and detects water vapor, CO2, and methane in an exoplanet's atmosphere. It can study objects in the Kuiper Belt, such as icy bodies and dwarf planets like Pluto, Eris, and Makemake. Now what if the James Webb Space Telescope were double the size? Its current segmented design paves the way for even larger, future space telescopes. If the size of the telescope is doubled, what kind of things would it see? Resolution increases linearly with diameter, so double the size means two times better resolution. And light gathering scales with the square of the diameter. Double the size means four times more light collected. To double the size to 13 meters in diameter, how could the telescope be built? One simple but least futuristic option is to launch it in multiple segments and join them in orbit like the construction of the ISS, using robotic assembly arms and astronaut-assisted work before it launches to L2. Or, to get more advanced, a little more sci-fi, let's take a quick journey into the future. When will humanity conquer in-space manufacturing and begin to dream of limitless-sized space structures. Massive beams, larger than any rockets can carry, are printed and knitted together by a Redwire Arconaut spacecraft, fabricating structures like a spider, not bound by the forces of gravity on Earth. From multi-kilometer trusses and terra-sized spacecraft to New Age telescopes orbiting solar panel farms and space station worlds, a constant supply of deliveries brings raw materials to the machine. Or how about a lunar-based construction yard? Using the moon's low gravity and predictable environment as an assembly base to build and test telescope segments, sending them to L2 using reusable lunar launchers. Or what if the telescope were smart and robotic, a transformer? Once in orbit, each segment flies by itself, self-aligns, and auto-assembles, locking into formation. They even self-detach when a replacement or upgraded version departs from Earth. The Encyclopedia of the Future Orbital Space Drones Space drones in orbit around Earth that perform space station to space station deliveries, creating the first off-world economy. Starshade a deployable flower-shaped space shield for creating artificial eclipses, moving between a star and a space telescope, the star shade blocks the starlight, enabling direct imaging of exoplanets hidden by stellar glare. The new large James Webb Space Telescope is launched. Its view is two times sharper. Its light-gathering strength is four times stronger. It detects objects four times fainter in the same observing time. It watches deeper into the universe. Seeing galaxies further back in time, some 13.6 to 13.7 billion years ago, at the end of the cosmic dark ages. The dark ages were a period after the Big Bang, when the universe had cooled enough for hydrogen to form, 
with only the very first stars and galaxies beginning to light up. A time when the universe was mostly dark, with cold hydrogen gas filling space. The telescope will see the first stars and galaxies forming, and details of their internal structures such as star nurseries and merging events. Closer to home, the large telescope will spot smaller Kuiper Belt objects and faint rogue planets that are not orbiting any star. In the Milky Way, it will see small exoplanets around fainter, cooler stars and detect faint atmospheric gases. What happens if humanity wants to go even larger? A little more sci-fi. Let's take another journey further into the future. A future with space telescope, space stations, and the Super Event Horizon Space Telescope Array. The Encyclopedia of the Future. Orbital Platforms. Large space stations for large-scale space vehicle, telescope, and habitat construction. Equipped with robotic cranes, construction 3D printers, raw material storage bays, human habitats, and materials testing labs. Robotic nomads. Human workers who control robots from a different location. Use cases, stocking shelves, specialist telesurgery, war zone surgery, supervising self-driving vehicle fleets, disability robot controllers, and space construction. For more sci-fi and to join the Encyclopedia of the Future, become a Venture City member on Patreon. The first ever image of a black hole was taken by eight telescopes spread from Antarctica to Spain, Hawaii to Arizona, and Chile to Mexico. The signals combined, creating a telescope the size of Earth's diameter. It was named the Event Horizon Telescope. Eight space telescopes are sent to L2. This is the Super Event Horizon Telescope. They fly in formation. Data streams from all telescopes combine, simulating a single massive telescope the size of Earth. It is 1.95 million times sharper than the James Webb Space Telescope. It will be famous for looking into the 11th dimension and witnessing the launch of GTA 7. But really, the telescope sees signals beyond the universe's first stars and galaxies forming, and deep into the cosmic dark ages, tracing the earliest formations of matter. It sees signals of the first mini halos where stars might soon form. And it watches the formation of early proto-galaxies assembling from primordial gas clouds. It witnesses primordial black holes, tiny black holes formed from high-density fluctuations where matter was packed tightly. Closer to home, it sees black hole event horizons and accretion disks in distant galaxies tracking matter falling in. It watches supernova explosions in other galaxies and witnesses the birth of heavy elements. And the telescope maps galaxies that outline the universe's web of dark matter. Even closer to home, the Super Telescope Array studies exoplanets in nearby star systems with surface details, cloud patterns, continents, and even weather systems. The telescope is a cosmic eye, seeing ancient light and far-off skies. Coming back to something more near future, a space telescope space station, where astronomers observe the universe while living in space, floating freely, surrounded by the dark night with a view out to the stars. It is a space telescope with onboard crew living quarters, combining astronomical research facilities with living spaces for scientific operations and maintenance also known as a telescope station or observatory station. Instead of data streams, scientists and astronauts observe the universe with their own eyes, deepening humanity's connection. The telescope station is a lighthouse, an altar for reflection. The astronomers, they are cosmic voyagers, living a life of discovery and wonder. Their theories grow larger and larger, bringing humanity closer to the edge of the universe. The nitrogen in our DNA, the calcium in our teeth, the iron in our blood, the carbon in our apple pies were made in the interiors of collapsing stars. The Encyclopedia of the Future Asteroid Space Stations 
the colonization of asteroids by converting a hollowed-out mining asteroid into a habitat space station, protecting its inhabitants from radiation. Implanted thrusters produce spin to simulate gravity and are also used for navigation. Transit Space Stations Space stations orbiting the Moon and Mars, serving as transit gateways for crew and cargo. Large ships launch from Earth, docking at the transit stations, while smaller landing ships transport down to the surface. This week on the Patreon, a short story, an astronomer's farewell. The link is here.